Senator Fuller. Good. We, we now proceed to the next order. Majority Leader, you know the challenges we have with the system. I don't have any name on my... You may proceed, Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to react to two statements. One is the first one by Senator Professor Ujenda, uh, my good neighbor, on these uh, cesses that are levied by county governments. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in the second Senate, immediately after the promulgation of the new constitution and this house uh, came into being, we put up a spirited fight to, support, to stop county governments from levying cesses on farmers, particularly tea farmers. And actually, Mr. Speaker, in the Budget and Finance Committee, we forced uh, KTDA to refund monies uh, to the farmers through their county governments because we held the view then, and we still hold the same view right now, uh, Mr. Speaker, that it is actually double taxation. The farmers of any crop, be it sugarcane, like what Senator Ogenda is talking about, tea, cotton, coffee, whatever, pay their fair share of taxes. Therefore, they deserve to receive as much service as anybody. But given the financial uh, difficulties and space that you are in as a country, Mr. Speaker, we have come to accept that uh, uh, charging cess and levies perhaps may be a way to better strengthen and give advantage to our farmers with regards to various things. For example, repair of roads uh, in the fields and uh, such like things, Mr. Speaker. However, Mr. Speaker, I am disturbed. The reason I'm disturbed, Mr. Speaker, is because county governments don't help their cause. We might be here as Senate and are interested in pushing the cause of devolution. But given how county governments continue to treat the farmers, Mr. Speaker, I know of counties, uh, Mr. Speaker, where farmers have been levied says, transpo on transportation and other things, but two or three financial years down the line, that money is accumulated in the accounts of county governments with no roads uh, being done in the particular regions where they had collected that particular money. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, unless counties are ready to provide and give good account of the farm monies that they collect from our farmers, as a house, Mr. Speaker, I hold the view that we should not allow them to pursue that particular route. Mr. Speaker, and this is known in open public, I had engagement, Mr. Speaker, last week with sugarcane farmers for my county. They know that the sugar bill is now on the mediation stage. And you know that there is a debate between the Senate and the National Assembly. Part of the amendments the National Assembly has rejected is a proposal by the Senate, Mr. Speaker, to have the road levies, or part of the cess money actually do roads in the sugarcane uh, zones, Mr. Speaker, to be done by county governments. The National Assembly holds the view that that monies need to go to Kerala. Mr. Speaker, when I asked the farmers, who do you prefer that we take this money to? I instruct me as your representative so that as I go uh, to speak out on your behalf, they were unequivocal and clear. They said, please give this money to Kera. If you give it to county governments, we'll never see this money. Therefore, unless counties, Mr. Speaker, become prudent in how they use these resources, it will be a long time before citizens trust them with the levies. Much as we are pushing for these resources to go to county governments, uh, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, I hold the view that Senator Ojemda is right in his place, and I hope the Budget and Finance uh, Committee, Mr. Speaker, can do justice, uh, Mr. Speaker, to the people of this republic by ensuring that they put in place mechanism, a time period within which if a county charges says uh, to farmers, they need to dispense of with either provide the service to Wananchi or return that money if they are able to procure the, uh, the services that are needed, Mr. Speaker. Finally, is on the issue of CES, uh, road tolling, Mr. Speaker, that has been brought by Senator Chimera. This matter is not as simple as Senator Sifuna wants to put Senator it, Mr. Speaker. Senator Gloria, you're out of order. <laughs> Standing order 117, you cannot walk in between the Speaker and the senator speaking. That is exactly what you've done. Proceed, majority, and conclude. By saying this issue of the toll roads is not as simple as uh, many of our colleagues want to put it. Mr. Speaker, I represent the people of Kericho in this house. 
I know that the government, for example, wants to build a road from Rironi here in Nairobi all the way to Malaba. And it's supposed to be a toll road. The people I represent in this house, Mr. Speaker, continue to pay for the loans that were taken to, to build Thika Road, to build that Dogokundu, and so many other roads that have been done elsewhere. Tell me why in my rightful mind, Mr. Speaker, I need to stand and say I defend that citizens of a particular part of the country where monies that were borrowed by the Republic of Kenya were used to do roads for them, and they are driving on those roads free of charge, while my own citizens, as they travel up country, Mr. Speaker, have to pay to use uh, these so-called toll roads. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, this conversation must be holistic. It is not as simple as just saying that don't toll this one, don't toll the other one. Mr. Speaker, we have to classify our roads, and the Ministry of Roads and Transportation must come before this house, Mr. Speaker, and set a limit beyond which when the government of Kenya, either by uh, funds that have been appropriated by parliament or, Mr. Speaker, through loans, have built road in various parts of the, uh, of the country, if a certain threshold is reached on the amount of money spent on a road, Mr. Speaker, then we need to agree. Mr. Speaker. What is your point of order, Senator Sifona? Point of order is that the majority leader is misleading the House Honorable Speaker because it is not true to say what, that... What is this standing order that is being contravened. 105 on statement of fact, Honorable Speaker. Then state as much. Yes. Honorable Speaker, it is not correct to say that the, the people of uh, uh, the people that are represented by the majority leader, the people of Kericho, I assume, uh, are the only ones who are paying for the roads or that they don't use the roads that were built using our taxes. I can assure the majority leader that even <laughs> residents of Kericho, they get to benefit from use of thicker road in the southern bypass. Because they don't just stay in the village, as has been demonstrated by he himself. Because he is from Kericho, but he doesn't drive on roads from Kericho, or in Kericho only when he's here. I have seen him in uh, other parts of the country, and he used the same roads, Honorable Speaker. So it is not proper for him to make that assertion, that the people of Kericho are paying for roads they don't use. Because they use those roads, Honorable Speaker. Majority Leader, kindly proceed to conclude your... No, 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 no. Mr. Speaker, Senator Sifuna is completely lost and I don't think understands what I'm trying to say. Mr. Speaker, the point is, there's a specific reason why a road is built to a particular place. The reason why a road is built to a particular region or location is because the people that head to that particular region or part of the country use it more than others. You cannot say that because I drive on Thika Road once every five years when I'm going to watch a football match uh, Mr. Speaker, at more international sports center, Kasarani, then my people have used that particular road. It's not the same as the road that goes from uh, Westlands here to uh, Total in Nakuru County as I drive home, Mr. Speaker, of the, over the weekend. Therefore, the point that I'm trying to make, and I hope that colleagues can be convinced, is that the conversation on tolling of our roads, Mr. Speaker, cannot be limited to just particular roads that have been built over a period of time. It must be based on value. That is what the rest of the world does, Mr. Speaker. If government spends a uh, money beyond a, a particular limit, then that particular road is told. It doesn't matter whether it's done now, it was done yesterday or in 1963, Mr. Speaker. So that the principle of equity is observed. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Bonnie. Thank you, 